hi and welcome to my channel um, we're up to the rising sign of Capricorn um, for the rest of the month yeah I know it's quite late again um, yeah but anyway um, so I want to try and jump into the reading as quick as possible but I will say that the video that's up on the community tab is is um, still worth taking a look at um, because I don't just cover the new and full moons of the month but I'm talking about the retrogrades and also I um, in this particular video not this one that I'm doing now but the the video um, that shows the charts not the cards um, that shows both tropical and trucidereal charts um, I talk about some aspects that went on um, at the full moon at the start of this month that will also be very similar um, in early December so I also give a bit of an explanation of like how it plays out real world the real world example of and a real world world example of how it played out um, from what I saw at that new moon when those aspects happened but um, yeah so it gives you a bit of a heads up in a way to sort of work out how it might play out for you according to your rising sign so yeah um sorry to reach <laughs> but yeah anyway um that's on the um community tab right at the top the top post other than that check the pinned comment and some links in the description box of this video that um, you might find helpful as well um, so yeah, let's jump into the cards and see what came through for you guys. There's a few of the from this deck for the Capricorn Rises. What's going on? Sixth house. Well, that's the Virgo house, and it would be your um. No, it wouldn't be your descendant because your seventh house is your descendant. That's in Gemini. Yeah, because your descendants cancer. So Gemini. Oh, Gemini. Okay, there you go. Sixth house Gemini. So that there's something there. Sixth house health duty service to others. Gemini is about communication. Siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, the local area, local travel, like in your car or whatever. Uh, eighth house shared resources Scorpio house I don't know if you can put that up a bit <clears throat> now we've got the Scorpio house and that's covered by the sign of Leo shared resources sex deaths occult taboo things like that we'll see series okay mothering nurturing energies okay let's see what else we can get from this like get some sort of um storyline because it's sort of there's a few things going on here third house is the gemini house and that is in pisces so it's another nurturing sign communicating in a nurturing way taurus Um, Taurus is in in your um, fifth house, yeah. The Leo house. Taurus, children, creativity, fun, romance, love affairs, that sort of thing. Okay, nurturance, communication, shared resources. And Taurus is a resourceful sign. Psyche. Ooh. Okay, so now we've got... She's an asteroid. Well, Ceres is as well. Psyche. The idea of what other people's opinions are is... That's based solely on, like I say, it's based solely on other people's life experience and that we shouldn't take it on that's one part of psyche um 
but you know our mental sort of makeup how are we dealing with that how are we looking after that how are we taking care of our mental I, could, I guess I could say Pallas Athena weighing up the pros and cons about things health duty service to others sixth house in Gemini Pluto, wow, okay. Well, Pluto is the ruling planet of Scorpio and Scorpio house things. Um, digging things, excavating things so that we can be the proverbial um, phoenix rising, weighing up the pros and cons to be able to clear the way for that, clear the gunk out which is opinions, uh, that, this can also be opinions we've adopted that may not be someone specifically putting out an opinion, but we've just adopted certain opinions that aren't healthy, you know, that need to, the health house being Virgo house, that we need to um, look at to clear it out. Aquarius. Well, that's in your second, the Taurus house. Friendships, social circles, groups. And your money, because it's your money house. You've got both money houses, the second and the eighth. You know, Taurus house and the Scorpio house, they're opposites. Um, and an Aquarius Leo, because Leo's there. What's this guy? Capricorn. Well, that's your rising sign, smack in the middle. Capricorn and Aquarius. Hmm. Okay, so we'll keep going, see if we can get a storyline. Mercury, will, as I'm recording this, he's in his pre-shadow. How you think, communicate, write, talk and travel. Your rising sun's smack in the middle there, and Sirius is right above it. How are you, are you communicating, nurturing? I mean, your opposite sign, as I was talking before, initially thinking it was seventh house with the Cancerian descendant, but then realized no, that's sixth house, so it's Gemini. Um, yeah, how, how are you communicating, nurturance? Um, how and how the world sees you because that's your rising sign Gemini so there's a lot about communication um, the energy is communicative mischievous, lively, witty and informative stimulating exchange is possible we've got a lot about communicating by the scenes of it because we've got third house which is covered by Gemini Oh, sorry, covered by Pisces, actually, because they're the, both the nurturing energies there, Ceres um, asteroid and Pisces sign. So the Gemini house, Mercury rules Gemini and um, Virgo, because you've got the Gemini and the Virgo house there. Mercury ruled, all about communication, smack bang next to your rising sign. We've got Aquarius here, so there's something to do with money and shared resources, with communicating and needing to clear any um, unhealthy viewpoints maybe in some way, whether that's others or other people or yours, so that you can be communicating genuinely and in a nurturing way. Something needs to be excavated. So it's, there's a bit of weighing up the pros and cons to work what out, work out what that might be. Uh, Pisces, again, the mystic in the third, in the Gemini house. So... 
So there's a call for nurturing energy when communicating, genuine nurturing, not, not sort of the... Because this could go both ways, you know, like if there's someone that's showing fake love and gaslighting when they're not being genuine, you know, kind of thing. Because we've got Psyche here and it could could be either way. Oh, look, we've got Pluto transformation. Pluto's come through twice. Um, yeah, so it has to be genuine communication that is nurturing in a healthy way. But yeah, there's a lot to do with communication. And how the world sees you with that communication. And it's got to do with shared resources, whether that's actual money or certain, see, shared resources with the Scorpio house. Could be anything, information or physical products or whatever, or, you know, money or shared income, uh, shared bank accounts, taxes, loans, credit cards and so forth. But there's a whole lot of communication. And that that's the um, Leo house, the fun house, so to speak. And Leo's in the eighth. So there's a, a measure of being creative and bringing fun into things, I think. Making some form of healthy transformation. What else? Aries, the radical. Well, yeah, because you've got to radically look at what's going on there that might be the culprit, the issue. Um, get excavating, weigh up the pros and cons. Well, weigh up the pros and cons and then work out what needs to be excavated. Uh, did I say where Aries was? Aries is in your Cancerian house, the fourth house. Okay, North Node, yep, follow your North Node. By doing this, you will be following your North Node, clearing things up, clearing the way, I want to say. Third house, again, Pisces in the third. Communicating, might be communicating to a Pisces. Might need to be communicating to a Pisces. Or you, you have Pisces sun sign. Or you know someone that's a Pisces sun sign or rising sign. And then we've got Taurus again. The bombshell. So perception being Pisces, perception as well. How do you perceive communicating in a Piscean way? bringing some creativity and fun into the situation in some way, enjoyment, you know, again, gen genuineness with how you relate with anyone, um, Aries or Pisces. Or Taurus. Or, of course, Gemini. So I'm looking at the specific signs that have been named. Taurus, Pisces, Gemini, Aries. In those particular cards. I guess you could include Aquarius in that too. But Pisces is coming in stronger though. But this is um, moving towards your north node. But yeah, there's some, some sort of, um, maybe some sort of ideal or, or way of doing something or thinking a certain way needs to be looked at. Weigh up the pros and cons to see what needs to be excavated and purged and cleared out. So that you've got that space to transform, you know. These may or may not have reversals. We'll walk through it if they do. Conjunction, alliance. Well, that's a good start because it's upright. Because they're all flying in formation. So there may be, because so, I was picking up the different signs, um, that might include a few different signs or 
together, working in tangent, you know, happily working together. Solar flares activate, yeah, activate the communication, yeah, healthy communication, I want to say. So it's sort of like that, like the formation, flying towards the activation of the solar flares. Uh, Uranus, change. <laughs> well, clearly there hasn't been change. Um, but this also tells me that with Uranus in um, retrograde, it could mean that. But it's also giving me, because Uranus on its own likes to break things up and make dramatic change. And even though we've got Pluto here twice, Pluto's more about purging. Uranus is blowing things up. So I think this being in reverse as well is, to me, it seems to be saying perhaps to do it in a more gentler, you know, Pisces series way, if that makes sense. Be gentle about the communication and making that change. Okay, oh, you've only got one of these, and it says hmm, relationship change. Okay, the blue is um, the throat chakra, communication and um, speaking your truth. And then we've got the heart chakra, well, you know, heart, emotions, relationships. Um, five is freedom and change. Six is temporary opportunity. It's also focus, detail and dignity, and it comes to an 11 and Generally with these cards, if I see a master number, um, I usually say it means that more than one person, including yourself, is going to benefit from jumping into these energies. Um, and if we look at 11, one and one, it, it, one on its own is um, personal power, emotional vitality. Okay, so now we're already up to the um, notes from the universe from for about your abundance. This seems to have run through quite quickly for some reason. I, hopefully I haven't missed anything. If I pick anything up, I'll let you know. But it seems kind of self-explanatory, some form of communicate healthy, healthy, com genuine communication needs to happen because it's going to help how the world sees you, because that's your rising sign. Go way out. Think beyond your present dreams to the dreams you will dream once these have already come true. And when you can clearly see how confident you will walk and how proud you will feel, start walking and feeling like that today. Far out the universe. Yeah. So I guess it's sort of think ahead in a sense. So weigh up the pros and cons about what the psyche issue might be, whether it's someone that's gaslighting you, someone that's uh, saying or treating you in a bad way or saying things that may be, you know, bringing you down or it's some sort of ideal or way of doing things that perhaps needs to be looked at again and the negativity purged it's taking going to take communication it's got something to do with some kind of shared resource money self-worth even might come into it but by doing it you're heading towards your north node which is a really good thing we've all got to do that well i mean it's the idea is we should be doing that because it's going to be to our benefit if we choose not to it's not really to our benefit so yeah okay so isn't it a hoot of all the people in all the world who truly get it few actually give it to themselves whatever it is you want start 
Give yourself compliments, praise and presents. Give yourself time, permission and love. Hugs, kisses and smiles, winks, laughs and applause. And I will give you even more. Now please, the universe. Yeah, so there might be a measure of self-worth since Taurus came through twice. Yeah. Taurus house? No. Yes. So the Taurus technically came through three times because Aquarius is in Taurus house and then Taurus twice there. So it could be a self-worth thing a bit too with the psyche and, and, and that could also be, um, you know, things like maybe doing a social media detox or something as well. What, what sort of things are we listening to? Who are we listening to? What sort of things are people saying that we're taking in perhaps by default not even realising, you know? It could be something like that. Anyway, we'll get to this card now. Oh, I've been meaning to tell you for the longest time that, well, concerning the illusions, time and space, the stars at night, the earth under your feet, the oceans, the rivers, the prairies, and everything under the sun, they're all yours. <laughs> Guess I thought you'd have noticed by now. Oh, yes, they are the universe. So, yeah, don't don't think um, in a, what's the word for it? Not stagnant way. What, what am I trying to think? In a way of lack. Don't think in terms of lack. You know, like this one said, start walking and feeling like you already have the... Um, the thing you want already you know don't don't block yourself in and hold yourself back because this isn't the south node it's the north node moving you forward okay so what do the guardian angels want you guys oh <laughs> conflict feelings which you have suppressed for a very long time are yearning to be acknowledged and expressed you are torn between what you think is the right thing to do and what your heart wants and this is the primary cause of stress in your life. We, your angels, urge you to follow your heart. Do what you would love, not what you think you should. Yeah. Don't be pulled along by what people's expectations and what they think you should do. We all have a life to live, which, you know, it's our life, not someone else's. Someone else can't be controlling us. Inner child, yeah. Nurture your inner child and begin to express the awesome beauty you hold within you. We live in a world where a formula exists for everything, yet love and creativity have no formula. They do not need to be studied, simply nurtured. Regularly set aside some time to just play. Yeah, like... Yeah, I'm putting that right on your rising sign because... It, and, and again, I... Stress the genuinity of it, if that was a word, Gen genuinity, genuine, yeah, being genuine about it, not just pretending to be fun, but really, really um, taking time out to just enjoy having, being silly, you know, having a bit of a fun time in some way, whatever, whatever way that is for you. What's this one? Prayer. Dear Guardian Angel, help me to believe that all is possible through love. Help me manifest my dreams. There you go. And live an inspiring and fulfilling life. You can be inspiring as long as you're being genuine about it, you know. Um, help me to feel God's presence in every moment. Help me feel eternally loved. Thank you for being always by my side. Yeah, reiterate the genuineness for some reason. I think mainly, see... If we're taking on other people's uh, ideas or, or demands, then we're not being authentic. That's what I'm trying to get at. If we're living for someone else or doing things the way we think should be seen a certain way, you know, that's not living genuinely and authentically we have to do what we feel comfortable with and what what's best for us so i'd i'd say 
take some time to just do something that that you particularly I want to say particularly that you think is going to seem immature or whatever you know you don't have to be doing it in front of anyone else just to be let let your inner child out no matter what gender you are dance stupidly to a song or you know so, I don't know <laughs> particularly specifically to do some dumb dance moves or whatever you know making yourself do that sort of thing knowing that you're being ridiculous you know but get into it and really have fun with it something like that it doesn't have to be dancing it could just be whatever you think specifically would normally seem like something you just wouldn't do you know then that's what you need to be taking time out to do in the privacy of you know your own home or whatever you know because I mean if you're doing it away from prying eyes then nobody can judge can they because they can't see so you know or it might be painting nothing in particular or drawing stupid shapes or I don't know just not st I don't want to say stupid not the silly just doing something silly that just that you would normally think oh, that's a waste of time I don't want to do something like that but it's something that calls to you like that that seems ridiculous that's yes yeah, that's more the word I'm looking for not not um stupid that's sort of derogatory um but yeah doing something that you would think would be ridiculous and that you'd normally pass off but take that time because it's going to be helping your mental in that sense and you're going to get a lot more done by you know clearing the way that way and looking at, at things like that to build your self-worth in a healthy way but yeah there's some sort of it will help then with the communication the, the nurturing communication about the shared resources income money self-worth I think it's all kind of connected in some way but yeah, purging that, per, the, the purging might be to, to focus on something you can do to really, to really um, nurture your inner child, I want to say, to allow your inner child some time to, to let them know um, you care kind of thing. That sounds strange, but it's 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 really a thing, you know. If we're constantly pushing down our emotions and feelings and all that sort of thing, I mean, yes, there's therapists and that for if it's really heavy duty stuff, um, but you know, for for a bit here and there, it's like it's it's what the same sort of thing as as it said, filling your own cup so that you've got enough to. Um, be of service to others you know in a healthy way so you're not drained and, and um, you know on the verge of burnout or anything but yeah you'll get more accomplished and, and you know fly in formation a lot easier if if you take some time for your inner child in a child work I think that's exactly what's going on here giving yourself some nurturing and having fun doing it because remember the Leo house and Leo's in there too in the eighth house so yeah I think it's got a lot to do with that first jump into um, taking time for your inner child to just just do something ridiculous that you wouldn't normally do or, or in some way it doesn't have to be anything big but as long as you get to enjoy that immersing in that kind of thing and then get into the communication with whoever you need to because we've got Aquarius here with the groups and friendships and wishes and dreams and all that in your second house. So I think that a lot will be gained by doing that first and then looking into anything else that's sort of been a negative, weighing up the pros and cons so you can purge that out and be renewed so you can follow your north node hopefully this makes sense now and i'm going to leave it there and wish you guys all the best of luck
rest of November and onwards. And until next time, bye for now.